Welcome to Mathematics with M's, Grade 12, Geometric Series, Part 2. Determining the sum of the terms of a sequence. So if T1, T2, T3, T4 denotes a sequence, then T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus T4 is called a series. So be careful now. So for a sequence, we use semicolons. For a series, we use a plus or a minus. A. Sequence 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 can be written as a series. 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9. If the sequence is 5, 2, negative 1, negative 4, then it can be written as a series. 5 plus 2, minus 1, minus 4, and so forth. We will use the symbol S and capital S to donate the sum of the first n terms of the series. So S1 is similar to T1. S2 is then T1 plus T2. S3 is T1 plus T2 plus T3. S4 is T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus T4. So sum to n terms will therefore be Tn plus T2 plus T3 and so forth plus Tn. Right, let's consider the series 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus 10 plus to the infinity. Well, and so forth. Now determine a the sum of the third of three terms, and then secondly, the sum of seven terms. So the sum of three terms will therefore be 1 plus 4 plus 7, which is 12. Seven terms will be 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus 10 plus 13 plus 16 plus 19, and that gives you 70. So that can be done on the calculator. Determine the sum of the first seven terms of the series with tk equals to 5k minus 3. Tk equals to 5k minus 3. So sum to seven terms is T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus T4 plus T5 plus T6 plus T7. Remember, sum of seven terms. So seven terms is therefore then 5 times 1 minus 3 plus 5 times 2 minus 3 plus 5 times 3 minus 3 plus 5 times 4 minus 3 plus 5 times 5 minus 3 times 5 times 6 minus 3 plus 5 times 7 minus 3. So remember now k is replaced with a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, a 6, and a 7. Right? Remove the brackets, use your calculator, and the answer is 119. Series and sigma notation. The mathematical symbol sigma is the capital letter S in the Greek alphabet. It is used as the symbol for summing a series. So therefore, that sigma means the sum of. So we look at the example there, sigma, and you'll notice on top of the symbol, there's a small letter N, and at the bottom, there's K equals to 1. And then in front of it, I mean, just next to it is written TK. Now, what does it mean? It means it is term 1. So it starts by 1 because K is 1. Is it clear? So it's term 1 plus term 2 plus term 3, etc. And it ends with term N. So that means the bottom value K equals 1 is where you start and the top N is where you end. And we use a plus because it is sum. So this read as follows, the sum of all the terms tk, so tk is the general term, remember now, so from where k equals to 1 up to k equals to n, and of course n will be a natural number, it means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right, let's look at example 12 then, calculate sigma of sum of 5k minus 3, where k starts in 1 and ends in 7. So that means, people, 5k minus 3 is the general term. It represents each term. The first k is 1, then it will be a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, a 6, and a 7. So when we do the substitution, look at the bottom now, then, so look at 7, that's the last term. 
k equals to n is the first term, and 5k minus 3 is the general term. Then you do your substitution into k, so it's 5 times 1 minus 3, 5 times 2 minus 3, 5 times 3 minus 3, and so forth, up to 5 times 7 minus 3. Then, you, of course, you add your like your terms, use a calculator, and the answer is, therefore, 119. Let's look at the next example. Calculate the sum of 3 times 2 to the power r, where r is 0, and the last term is 7. So the first term is 0, and the last term is 7. Now, if you count the terms 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you'll notice there's 8 terms, and you expected 7. Now, the reason why it's 8 is because r doesn't stand start at 1, it starts at 0, and that makes it 8 terms. So please be careful with this, right? So replace r with a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, up to a 7. Use a calculator, and the answer is 765. Take note that the number of terms in the above series is actually 8 and not 7. Let's look at more examples. The sum of 2k, where k is 1, and of course, the last term is 8. So therefore, 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, up to 2 times 8. And how many terms are there? There are 8 terms, because k starts in 1. So 8 minus 1 plus 1 is 8. So therefore, the answer is 72. If you look at b, sum of 2k, starting in k 0 and 8, now I expect 9 terms, because k starts in 0, Right, so substitute, use your calculator, and the answer is 72. The next one, now k starts in 2. Be careful now. So we can't expect 8 terms anymore. We expect 7 terms now, because k doesn't start in 1, it starts in 2. So please be careful, right? So it's 2 times 2, 2 times 3, 2 times 4, 2 times 5, 2 times 6, 2 times 7, and 2 times 8. Use your calculator, and the answer is 17. Notice that the last value you substitute is not necessarily the number of terms that will be added. So therefore, in the general, for sigma of t, k, k equals to m and n, the number of terms will be the top minus the bottom plus 1. Take note, the top minus the bottom plus 1. So the top is n minus m plus 1. So it's a very important formula to help you to determine how many terms are there in this series. Right, let's look at the following two examples. Determine the number of terms in the sequence, in the series. n squared, so n starts in 5 and ends in b. So now b is unknown, so we don't know how many terms. So the number of terms, remember now, the formula is top minus bottom plus 1. So it is b minus 5 plus 1, which is b minus 4 terms. Look at b, k equals to n plus 1. So the bottom is n plus 1, the top is 2n. So therefore, top, which is 2n, minus bottom, be careful with the brackets, n plus 1 plus 1. Remove the brackets, and the answer is therefore 2n minus n minus 1 plus 1, which is n terms. Next one, expand and calculate. The sum of, now it starts with 6, m3, and n12. Now the expression next to the sigma is a constant. Be careful now. Now we're dealing with a constant 6. So slightly different. So, but I need to bring in m. So what I do is, I write 6 as 6m to the power 0. Now that is uh, acceptable because m to the power 0 is 1 and 1 times 6 is 6. So I'm not changing my values here. Why do I do it? So I can expand. So be careful with this one. So therefore, m is 3, then a 4, then a 5, right up to a 12. So it is 6 plus 6 plus 6, plus, 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 plus a last 6, right? So the number of terms will be, remember now, 
12 minus 3 plus 1, top, minus bottom plus 1. So there should be 10 terms. So therefore, there should be 10 sixes. And the answer is 60. Write the following series in sigma notation. So now we're going to reverse the process. We're going to do it in the, the other way around. So 2 plus 5 plus 8 plus 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 83. Now 83 is the last term. Now if you have a closer look, you'll notice this is arithmetic. Because 5 minus 2 is 3. 8 minus 5 is 3. So there is a common difference of 3. So therefore A is 2 and D is 3. So we're going to the general formula for arithmetic. Remember now, Tn equals to A plus N minus 1D. Do your substitution and you get your general term as 3n minus 1. So then remember now, so that must be written in uh, right behind the sigma notation, 3n minus 1. Then of course, n starts in 1 and it ends in 28. So how do we know there are 28 terms? Well, use the formula 3n minus 1. And of course, 83 is the last term, so Tn is the last term. So therefore, 83 minus 3n minus 1, make n the subject, and then you see it's exactly 28 terms. Look at B. 2 plus 6 plus 12 plus 20, then you will realize that this is actually what we've learned in grade 11, a quadratic sequence. Because the first difference is 4, 6, and 8. And the second difference is 2 and 2. So therefore, I need, need to first find out the general formula. So remember now, 2a equals to 2. So a is 1. Then you put that 1 into 3a plus b, which equals to 4. So b is 1. Then, of course, you put the a1 and the b1 into a plus b plus c equals to 2, and c is 0. Then put all three values into the formula tn equals to ak plus ak squared plus plus uh, bk plus c remember that formula and then you end up with k squared plus k that is your general formula your general rule now you know where to write it in front of sigma k always starts in one and we don't know how many terms are they say to n terms so therefore the top number is n the bottom number is k equals to one and the general term is k squared plus k. Let's look at the following examples. Expand and, cal and calculate each of the following. So a is the common, the common a is sigma. A, so a, b, c, d, e, and f deal for sigma. And number two, a, c, e, and g is you have to rewrite it back into sigma notation. So I will advise you to work through these examples, make sure that you can do them, and the solutions appear on the next page. Here are the solutions of your problems from the previous. Please mark your work and make sure you do understand. Right? All the best. Right, this is uh, Mathematics with M's. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it's it is worth your while. Please don't forget to give me a huge like and to subscribe.